All right, hey guys, OFD checking in here, and thank you for joining me here on the channel. I know it's been a little bit between videos, and it's been taking me a little bit longer to get videos up, but been super busy, life is good, and it's keeping me very, very busy. So, but hey, guys, this last week, and actually just got back today, my wife and I, we took our travel trailer over to the Central Coast, over to Oceano Dunes, had a great, great time over there. One of the things we like to do when we travel is to go thrifting. Of course, being a watch nut, I'm always going into the thrift stores looking for watches. So we spent some time uh, in Grover Beach uh, yesterday on Grand Avenue, and there's a, a spot that has about five different thrift shops in it. And so, of course, I go right to the counters where there's the jewelry or anything like that. You know, you know if there's watches in, on the top in a basket, those are probably like really junky uh, plastic watches and whatnot. But I always, always look because you hear those stories about treasures being found in um, thrift stores and, and you know you, you always want to be one of those people so anyways we'd gone to four of them I'd gone up and looked at one to kind of scout it out for recon it for my wife and she went to another one and the one I went to to check out was just like the other three would bid in and it wasn't anything very exciting so went down to the fifth one where she was inside and I, I wasn't going to go inside I thought I'll just stand out here beautiful 70 degree weather in the sun near the ocean uh, but I decided to walk in so this this was the Second Chances Store 2. It's a, um, it's a women's uh, benefit. It helps for a, a women's shelter in, uh, I do believe, in Grover Beach, California, to help protect women from domestic violence. And so this was the store that had kind of the fancier stuff, the fancier furniture, a little bit different things. And I just walked in to the front door, and I went right to the little glass counter, and I started looking. And there was, uh, from what I could tell, there was two watches in there. There was a, a little dress bulova. A quartz watch, nice looking little clean watch. There was a solar um, quartz Seiko. They wanted $70 for it. Not a bad price for what the watch was, but nothing I was really interested in. So I saw those couple of watches and started to turn around and walk out. And my wife said, uh, hey, did you see that Seiko in there? And I said, yeah, I said right there. And I pointed at the solar one with the black band. And and I said, yeah, but it, you know, it's nothing I really need for the collection or want. And she says, no, I, I meant this one. And there was a, a kind of a book on the counter, and she pushed the book to the side, and under there was this watch. And, um, you know, immediately my radar went bing, and I went, oh, yeah, I, I would like to see that watch. And so couldn't see what the price was on it at the time, and pulled it out of the, uh, pulled it out of the case, and she showed it to me. As you guys can see, the list price on the watch was $125. Now, I wasn't quite sure. Now, I know I'm not the, the monster expert out there. I love Seiko watches. Have tons of them. I've probably got 20 in the collection at this point, but I'm not as familiar with the monster line. And I knew this was a Seiko monster, but I wasn't exactly sure, uh, you know, what generation it was. Um, when she pulled it out of the box and handed it to me, one of the things I saw right off was the second hand started moving immediately, which told me, hey, you know, it's in good condition. At least it's running as soon as she picked it up and moved it. Uh, another thing was the screw down crown. The crown was out. But I didn't, I didn't even think about how far out it was. I just wanted to make sure that it screwed down good, and it did. Um, the watch was filthy. The watch was absolutely gross. Um, had chunks of stuff down in between the bezel. Uh, and not, not like somebody had abused it, but just like somebody wore it every day, sweated with it on, did work with it on, and it just got stuff built up in it, you know, all these different areas. The tsunami on the back was actually almost a yellowish brown. It had so much stuff inside of it. All of the case back holes for taking the case back off. Uh, I had to use a toothpick. Those were my tools of choice. I don't have any um, peg wood, so I used toothpicks uh, to clean up the crown on the watch. I used some dental floss. Um, I had a little bit of Windex, which I used to help get some of the, the chemicals, the, the uh, stuff off the back. It was on there so thick. And then I just gave it a good bath in some um, antibacterial Dawn with a nice toothbrush and cleaned it all up. And when I was done, I was absolutely blown away at the condition of the watch. Now, from what I can tell, guys, looking at the serial number on the watch there, and if you guys can see it, it's a 050047. I do believe, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, this is a May of 2000 um, Gen 1 Seiko Monster. This is running the 7S26 in it. Reference number on this watch, if you know the, mo the models are, uh, or the, you know, the reference is uh, referring to the movement, this is an SKX, meaning a 7S26, SKX 779, which is the original black tuna. Uh, so when these first came out, there was the black tuna like this uh, on bracelet. I do believe they offered them on a rubber strap at the time. And also the orange monster, which everyone knows the orange monster. So 
I've only in my life had one Seiko Monster and it was a later model. I think I got it around 2018. It was the orange and black version. Really cool watch. Um, six or four or 35 movement in that watch. Four or 36, I do believe in that watch. Um, and it was a cool watch, but I didn't love it. It didn't really settle with me. And so I let it move along. So, but this one guys, being that it's a Gen 1, these are going for a lot more than the, the $125 price I paid for it. You guys can see, just to make sure you know it was me. There's my name down there and everything like that. I don't know what your sales tax is like, but we're at 875 out here in most of California. But really cool find. I mean, this is one of those things that you walk into a, a thrift store and you just hope to find something like this. And, you know, taking a look at it, guys, it's it's almost a little bit hard to believe that somebody wore this watch, you know, for 22 years or something. Or, I don't know, maybe they wore it for five years and stuck it in a box and it's been sitting somewhere in a box. And, you know, in an estate sale, it showed up at the second... Uh, Second Chance Thrift Store. So very cool watch. Um, I did want to show you guys what's really cool also. This was the box it's in, which is not a factory box, but I'll go ahead and take the top off and show you. You can see it said Seiko Watch, $125. But this was so freaking cool, guys. Look at this. I even have the extra links. And you guys can kind of look at some of the, the pins down in there, how black and grimy they are. A lot of that was going on on the watch itself. So I actually have the extra links. And it was funny because I asked them... You know, when you're at a when you're in a store and you're buying something, especially a thrift store or pawn shop, you ask, can you give me, you know, can you give me a little bit of a deal? And she said, no, you know, we're a charity and I can't really do that. And they showed me that they had seen one last sold on eBay for two hundred and fifty dollars um, in back in July. Um, now, was that a uh, I do believe it was because this one is a 7S 260350. So that was that was a good deal. Um, I'm not sure. You know how that sold for that price, but even that is a great price for one of these watches. They're selling for, you know, around three hundred dollars on the secondary market, from what I say uh, can see out there. But they do go up quite a bit depending on condition and everything like that. So let's go ahead and throw this watch on my seven-inch wrist and uh, go ahead and we'll uh, stick around and we'll have a really cool loom shot at the end. All right, so even better is the watch was actually not sized to my wrist, but it fits me pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect, but I'm going to wear it like this. I have no problem with it. For those of you that are not aware of the size of the case, the Seiko Monster series, you want to call it, uh, this is a 42.5 millimeter case from side to side. You're looking at 47 and a half. Lug tip to lug tip comes in at 13.5 uh, millimeters of thickness, and it's running 20 millimeter lugs if you do want to do a bracelet change. This one for me will actually stay on this factory bracelet. It does have the diver's extension there and everything on this freaking thing works. So, I mean, there's not even really that many desk diver marks on this watch. So, like I said, I'm not sure the story behind this watch. You can see the crystal is almost perfect on it. If it was worn for maybe five years, like I said, and got a little dirty, but somebody took care of it a little bit and, and it just had grime on it. And, uh, I got lucky and cleaned it up, and I'm going to give it its second life here. I'm really, really enjoying this. So let's dim the lights and check out the loom. All right, so I know there's light coming in the room. There's people that are going to absolutely lose their mind over that, that I'm not doing a loom shot in complete darkness. But it just is what it is. My camera doesn't work good in pure darkness. It's not even a camera. This is my phone So that I'm filming on. But what's crazy is this watch, if I do believe it, is 22 years old. So that is saying something about Seiko Lumabrite. Even if this was a 2010 model, it'd be a 12-year-old watch. But I do believe, and again, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure there's a lot of Seiko experts out there that can tell me if this is a Gen 1 2000 model. But look at that freaking loom. Lumabrite, proprietary Seiko loom. It's some of the most amazing stuff out there, really, for watches. I absolutely love it. So... All right, guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up down there at the bottom. I hope that if you go thrifting that you guys can find a treasure like this. I really do. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. Please do. All right, thanks, guys.